Mike Stuchiner, Master Herbalist here with Z Natural Foods. And today is another educational video as a part of the ZNF Herb and Superfood Education Program. Today's topic is going to be on inflammation. Now, over like the last eight or nine years, I would say there's been a lot of uh, information coming out in the research and in science that is directing, that is making direct links between the inflammation process in the body and the disease process in the body and how they are somehow connected. Um, and this is interestingly going across the board of all disease that we see for the most part. Um, what I want to talk to you guys today about is where I think that we've sort of, in Western science, slightly gone off the beaten path and why I don't think inflammation in itself, while it does have a direct effect, I believe it's more of a secondary effect because I don't think inflammation itself is a true causing agent of disease or imbalance in the body, okay? So when you look at the big picture of the human body, um, I believe that we need to look at not just the inflammation, but what is actually causing that inflammation to be triggered or that inflammation-based reaction. Okay, and I personally believe, based on much of the science that's out there and on much about what history has taught us about the human body and the way the human body has evolved, is that the fact that our bodies under such stress due to external factors, our bodies have have forgotten how to or have been not so much I shouldn't necessarily say forgotten but the fact that our bodies are not having what would be considered a healthy stress response and I believe that lack of a healthy stress response is what is in fact perhaps helping to trigger these unhealthy inflammation responses now I understand that there are many factors that go into this scenario but I'm putting aside the overuse of anti-inflammatories and pain medications and addiction and, 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 and the level of addiction that we see in society to help to deal with pain and inflammation because I'm putting that aside not because it's not a relevant factor but more because I think that again I don't think that we're looking at the big picture when we utilize those things and take those things into account. I do think that they are relevant, I do think that they have a place in the big picture but I don't think that they are the true big picture of what's occurring here, okay? So now we have two types of anti-inflammatories that are being rampantly used in society. You have your natural anti-inflammatories like turmeric, ginger, um, or what I should say is you have natural foods and plants, medicinal plants, that support a healthy inflammation response like ginger, turmeric, black cumin seed oil, and things of that nature. There are many that could be mentioned. And turmeric in itself has well over a thousand studies and documented papers in science that do prove that it does exactly what it says it does. But again, I think that when we utilize these things, we're utilizing them in hopes of seeing something that might not be as attainable based just on using that specific medicinal herb as we think. Has turmeric been proven to support a healthy inflammation response? No two ways about it. But the question is, is supporting the healthy inflammation response the only thing that is necessary in supporting and bringing balance back to the body? And the answer to that question is absolutely positively no. Okay, I believe we need to look at the bigger picture again and look at how our bodies are responding to stress. Because again, I believe that, that unhealthy stress response is in fact what is triggering, okay, the um, unhealthy inflammation response. And I don't believe that turmeric, ginger, or any other substances that help support a healthy inflammation response are going to in fact support a healthy stress response. I think what we need to do is we need to look at utilizing herbs that have adaptogenic 
natures to them. So adaptogens and adaptogenic herbalism is really where I think we should be focusing more of our research in order to look at balance and bringing the body back into a state of balance. So what I did was about two years ago, I did something very interesting. I have a website, EliteHerbalist.com, and right now it's, 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 been, it's been taken down due to some big technical issues, and I will be eventually bringing my website back up. But right now, it's down. And on my website, one of the things I did was um, I had had 15 individuals over a six-month period write me letters uh, and sign up for programs with me in terms of what Western medicine considers inflammation-based conditions, okay, because they wanted my help using whole foods and herbs to be able to support the body in helping itself to recover, okay? And what I did, what I ended up doing was I ended up writing each one of those people to see if they all wanted to be a part of um, what I called a mini study that I was going to conduct myself to see how they would respond, okay, to the protocol I gave to them, okay. Now, interestingly enough, all of these people were not using any natural uh, anti-inflammatories, nor were they using any synthetic or chemical anti-inflammatories like pharmaceuticals. They were also living what you would consider the average American lifestyle, okay? Lots of stress, lots of bad eating, lots of lifestyle ramification issues going on. What I did was I asked them to make one simple change for the next six months in their life. That was it. I wanted them to choose any two adaptogenic herbs, and I gave them a list of 10 different adaptogens that they can pick from, okay? And the goal was to simply use two of them every day, twice a day, approximately a teaspoon's worth, twice a day, okay? And they were to use it seven days a week without skipping a single day. And at the end of the six months, and they were, they were to change nothing else in their life. Okay, at the end of that six months, I asked them to report to me what their results were. Now, after reading the ZNF, Herb and Superfood Education Program, you'll notice that I talk about the use of tonics and adaptogens over an extensive period of time for years, even a lifetime of using these types of herbs in order to see the accumulating results that people want to see. But I did a short-term thing with these people where I asked them just to use it for those six months, okay? After six months, all 15 of those people wrote me back telling me that they saw significant improvement in their overall well-being and in their overall health, okay? Now, when I asked them specifically about inflammation, all 15 people responded by specifically telling me that their level of discomfort had gone down on average 85% without taking anything specific for inflammation. Okay? So what that teaches me is, is that we're not looking at dis-ease or inflammation on a big enough picture. And the use of things like turmeric and ginger and all these other foods that are utilized to support a healthy inflammation response, while they may be very helpful with that symptomology, in the overall picture, I think what we need to look at is utilizing more adaptogens and tonics in our lifestyle if we want to truly get profound results. Now, this is not to encourage, and I'm going to state this very clearly, this video is not to encourage you just to take a bunch of adaptogens and tonics and not make any other lifestyle changes. I simply did that just to prove a point that making that one simple change will have an outrageously profound effect, and I knew it would from my own years of experience.
Okay, guys, so I hope this video has really cleared up for you any misnomers or any sort of things that you might have been confused about when it comes to the topic of inflammation and what I believe we need to start focusing on in science and in herbalism in order to start seeing greater improvements in people's well-being. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.